and Eric, I want to get right off the rip because there's just way too much to talk about when it comes to this one. But Jalen Carter had an arrest warrant put out. He left Indianapolis and the combine because of an incident that happened involving the death of a teammate and things of that nature. What do you make of this? Let's start off with that. Like, let's talk about Jalen Carter and the implications of this for this young kid. The whole thing is shocking. The whole thing is really surprising. I mean, the timing of everything is confusing. You know, his association with it, you know, obviously coming up so close to the draft and obviously the first day of the combine, everything layered on top of this is just kind of baffling. Now, he spoke I think out. That's what, but that's what I think irritates me the most. This happened back in the fall and it gets all of a sudden now we have a arrest warrant the first day of the combine the yeah. first day of this kid the rest of his life i don't understand it. this is the moment yeah like two what? misdemeanor warrants and they made that public and like it, it, it according to him there's inaccurate ah. reporting that's being attached to it he had a of long course. statement that came Naturally. out yeah yesterday and you know i don't blame him so hopefully the way it plays out you know, I because again, I can't speculate on what we don't know. Yeah, for sure. But from what it looks like, it's very, very fishy. I'm not saying he did it, did like what was responsible or not, but just what was like how it was unfolded, like the way it was reported, the way this is all coming out right now, just kind of rubs me the wrong way a little bit. It, it, and I got to be careful here because I don't want to make light of the fact that there was somebody who lost their life in this situation. Right. Right. And and if he was acting irresponsibly, then he does need to take responsibility for his actions. Absolutely, I agree. But outside of that, here's my problem. When we go into draft season, the two big names we talk about, Mel Kuyper, Todd McShay, right? Mm -hmm. McShay comes out and says this kid has character issues a, a while ago. Then it comes out and is revealed the kid's using his scholarship money to pay food or pay for food right. for one of his teammates who wasn't on scholarship. Yeah. And maybe that went against team rules, and maybe some would consider that a character issue or whatever. But why are we doing this? Like, I understand needing to get people information, but defaming character in order to achieve that end seems out of bounds. We're in the era now where dissecting a player's personality and their, you know, the inside, like who they are, is more speculated than ever now in 2023. But, I mean, obviously, in the NFL, though, they don't really care too much about it. I know we're going to pick apart about the Lions angle what they should do. But to me, considering it two misdemeanors, I mean, again, we don't know how severe, how serious his involvement is. Hopefully, if it's not involved with, you know, obviously the death of who was involved in, you know, the tr horrific aspects of it. However, I don't think this is going to move the needle too much in terms of what his stock is going to be. Well, and that's kind of, I think, the, the natural progression, the natural thought process, right? Is like, what does this do for his draft stock? Now, when this first came out, you and I were talking on Wednesday, and we said, the first thing I told you was, I don't want to make light of the situation, but this could be the best thing that's happened for the Detroit Lions. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And in that sense, I can't really be too upset about it. No. Like, if he's there at six, do you have any issue drafting him at six? I don't. Barring something, like, horrific coming out, right? Like, yeah. this was, like, completely irresponsible, like, you know. Under the Tunsil influence. With the, with, yeah, yeah. Larry Tunzel with the bong rip right, the night right. before the draft or, what, you know, whatever exactly. the case may be. Do you hesitate at this point to take him at six? No. No. Again, we don't know the full involvement for it. For but, sure. again, it was just based on what we know now. I wouldn't hesitate on him falling at six and possibly bringing him in. I don't think that would be an issue. I think we have the right leadership on this franchise to even, like, say that he is kind of like a guy that's, you know, that needs some, you know, tuning and growing up. I think the Lions are establishing a culture where you can put guys under the wing of a guy like an Aiden Hutchinson and the veterans that they bring in and the coaching staff that's so player friendly to get him in the right path and focus on football and keep his, you know, mind in the right place where it's supposed to be. 
but I, I don't give. I'm not looking at it as a gamble. I think that's a, a blessing if he would fall to six. Yeah, I, I mean, we're looking at a guy, 16 tackles last year, three sacks, two forced fumbles. Not eye-popping numbers, but that's not really his job, right? His no, job not at is all. stop the run. His yep. job is to make create double teams to create opportunities for your edge players. Uh, just looking at his draft profile, unparalleled pop in his hands, tosses 300 pounders with one of his mitts is what PFF says. It's a very strong guy. Does mm -hmm. everything quickly, does not move like a defensive tackle. That's the type of athlete you want if you're a Detroit Lion. And depending on how all of this shakes out, if he's there at six, you don't pass. No, you cannot. You do not pass. You cannot. He's like, yeah, that would be a blessing. And again, this is coming in a draft where a lot of teams around 10 are going to be looking to try to move up for those four quarterbacks. So it's going to be an opportunity where that could happen or not. And this on top of it now, it, yeah, it's a, it's mean, a wild update to shake. I was shocked when I read this report. Shocked. And again, I think I was more shocked at the timing. And I understand yeah. that there's a process. And I understand that these things take time. And there's Everything has to go through the judicial process. I, I totally understand that. The day of the combine seems oddly, oddly coincidental. Not to mention the day of the combine where it was player interviews. Right. That's that's just like what are we doing to these guys? I I can't make sense of it. Like, again, I understand where like some things would be known. Like you know, if it was something like a, a DUI or sure. like somewhere you know forbid of taking some like again, well, as we did the result was somebody's life being resolved again we don't know his involvement in that regardless i don't think what he's being looked at for now would be something to like kind of you know push back against especially how on the much, day of it. how much do you think and i think this is a point that some people have brought up as well how much do you think that the henry rugg situation plays into the thought process of teams when they're looking at a jalen carter now I think you have to keep it under consideration at this point because that was that another Brutal. shocking situation. I mean, guy so young to be doing something so dumb and considering what the result was, which is the yeah. lives lost and his career loss essentially and life itself. But he just I think you kinda have to take it serious, which is maybe why it came out at this time. Um But it just leaves us with more questions than it does answers. And like that's the unfortunate part about it. He spoke on his innocence so again maybe there's something to be said about it but let's hope that's the case because if it does come out that it's something bigger than what he's saying that's not going to turn out good then it's going to become a problem because sometimes it's like where the cover-up is bigger than what the lie or what the incident was if that's a case of what we're looking at then that could be something too that maybe teams look at as like kind of a, a knock or a flaw yeah. yeah i don't know it's gonna be uh it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens here uh in the next couple of weeks to be honest with you as far as the draft goes as far as this how this affects his stock and how it impacts the detroit lions and that's ultimately what we are here to you know figure out and and discuss is how does this affect the detroit lions you know what i'll, I'll even double down because we just okay. talked about this the other day yep i'm still not even against trading up for him honestly you're hoping still, obviously, because this is, you know, it is what it is. And these kind of things drop stock. But I'm still not against the, opp the opportunity or the option of going up to get him. Just to solidify that future. I'm not against it. Okay. Well, I, know, I, 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 I can't say that I am either. But I see, to me, I'm not really. Hold on. Hold on. Hold yeah, on. Hold I'm, on. Hold on. Okay. Again, and this is going to go into our free agency talk. Okay. I told you, if they shore up things during free agency, then yeah, use the draft capital to trade up. However, if I'm trading up, I'm trading up for Will Anderson. I like Will Anderson okay. more than I like Jalen Carter. Okay, that's fair. I'm alright with does that. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I'm good with and that. So, 